Don't know, I'd have to use some Google Foo and check it. You don't want to use all your Google Foo up in one go, though. Well, no, it is a precious resource. It is. Thing. Yeah, we don't want it using for just any old thing. Oh, we're live. Oh, on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Oh, wow. We're, we're a few minutes early, so, you know. It's cool. I've been out and ran the car this morning, this afternoon. Oh, good girl. Yeah. It's still starting, so. How's your day been? Busy? Uh, a little bit CBA, to be honest. I mean, I've made lunch with um, excellent sausage and hash browns and a variety of seasonal vegetables and gravy. Sounds yummy. Um, was nice. I cooked a roast gammon dinner. And I, I hung the washing out and I've just brought it all in and thrown it on the sofa. That's what the pile of teal and cerise and um, purple is behind me. That will be my towels. Is it actually raining yet? Because we've just got a lot of cloud. It's definitely threatening in the air. It's not raining yet, but I've but got a couple of sort of threatening spots yeah. of water on the front windows. And I thought... I'm not taking the chance. It won't be long. Yeah, it, it won't. And that's the thing, isn't it? You just never know. Well, and it's <laughs> it's typical, isn't it, when you've had your washing out all day and it's almost dry and that's when the heavens open. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, we could probably do with um, a bit of rain. My mum spoke to Jake on the phone today, so she's happy about that. Excellent. And I thought, given that I was um, losing my knitting abilities with all the crochet, I'd better do knitted mask mates today. Oh, well done, yay. Just keep me tension nice and even and whatnot. Yeah. Just see if I can invite anybody. Usually there's a little noongly flip. Oh, I'm not going to invite that in my Jane Sadler. Oh, God, not her again. It must be the name Emma. They're so annoying, all of them. Especially that one. Emma Janes are the worst. Emma Louise's are all right. You think that's the difference? Well, that's what we all seem to be called. We all seem to be either Emma Jane or Emma Louise. Oh, Anne Hall's in the house. Hey, Anne. Woo -woo. It's nice to see you. How are you doing on a Sunday? She's probably been out running this morning. Nice long run on a Sunday. I had the day off. I decided I wasn't going to bother. I was a bit CBA this morning. But I did clean the kitchen instead. And okay. Cooked, cooked a roast gammon. Roast potatoes. You like, you like your gammon though, don't you? do love a roast gammon. And I tell you what... The crackling was just superb today. Callum said it was the best bit of crackling he's seen in a long, long time. Even I ate some. Yeah. Just put loads and loads and loads of salt on today. Um, like literally covered it in salt. But also I found that it's better. Do you know, like you, you can get your gammon either in a circle or you can get it in like the horseshoe style. Yeah. I found that the horseshoe ones do a better um, crackling than the round ones. Okay. Good to know. Mm -hmm. So when you're in the shop next, that's the shape you want to look out for. I thought I'd get my knitting in the, in the shop. Yeah, why not? So, um... Are you brave in the shops anytime soon? No, no plans. Uh, unless we run out of milk for Jakey. Yeah. Um, I, I forgot syrup, but do you know it's fine. Mm -hmm. um, depending on whether anybody gets back to me with the outrageous quotes I've had for international shipping. And I might have a couple of parcels to post. Um, yeah. But that's just a quick trip into town. That doesn't require a supermarket. Cool. 
and there's not generally much of a queue in the post office. They're only open 10 till 2 at the moment. Oh, are they? Yeah. Mm. I think I'll go on Tuesday evening. I will need fruit and veg by then. I might need some of my rice milk. Yeah, blanket's looking very long. Um, it's got about five more centimetres to do because mm -hmm. where it's gonna it's gonna half that so i think it's just ever so slightly i don't know i'm not quite sure what do you think i don't know how wide a baby is the last one i did i did it 45 centimeters wide right and that's about 40 ish right so they're generally a bit scrawny when they arrive, aren't they? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it still needs the other end doing, and that will be a button hole band because this one's the button band. Mm -hmm. You know what it's like. You just keep going until it's like six inches too long and have to rip it back out. That's the law of knitting, isn't it? Kind of, yeah does seem to be yeah well last time i measured it i i had it at you know about five more centimeters to go um so it's going to go that way right so i don't know i suppose that's about the width of a pram isn't it i might just finish this repeat and then leave it do you put a hood on uh, not on this one, it's not going to, it's going to have, um, on the top bit there, it will have like a ribbed section which stays open at the front, like that, so the, the back rib will act as, to go at the back of the head if you know what I mean, and then the rib will be open there. Am I making any sense, or am I just flinging my hands about like I'm doing Vogue? Kind of. <laughs> But I trust you a bit, it'll be perfect, so it's fine. It's, you know, it's what's been requested. So, uh, oh, Helen's with us. Helen, are you still in hospital, my dear? Hey, Helen, lovely to see you. Hope you're feeling a little bit better. Have you, has she managed to escape, do we know? No, um, oh, there was no. a post earlier, I think, they're talking about moving her back to like the original ward as opposed to the one she's been on. Right. Which hopefully will be a bit more comfortable. I only go into Ravelry first thing in the morning these days. It's about the only chance I get. So if it's not in there for about half past eight, I miss it until the next day. Oh, this was on Facebook earlier. Oh, was it? Oh, well, I won't have seen that. Yeah. On our Facebook. Uh, no, just I was going to say, I was going to say that's the same. I go on in the morning. I go on Facebook and Instagram and Ravelry, and like read through and catch up a bit. And so, if it goes on after that, I don't see it till the next day. I got told I was sad earlier. Why? Um, because I shared a a little clip of Kermit the Frog singing "Lovers, Dreamers, and Me." You know, okay. the, someday you'll find it at the end of the rainbow. Yeah, and who called you just, sad? Somebody upstairs. Oh, he who shall not be named at the moment. Well, we know. Well, my kids call me that all the time, so it's fine. Well, you know, it, it'll be the sort of thing that he's sharing with his own kids in a few years, and I'll be able to just look over my glasses at him and go, okay, sad of you. Do you remember um, the Paul McCartney one? Sorry, I thought you were about to sing Kaylee then. No, I was going to sing Bum, 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 Bye, yeah, Bum. Oh, bum, the front bum. chorus. Yeah. Win or lose, sink or swim. Win or lose, sink or swim. One thing is certain, we never give in. Yeah, enough of that. Helen says she's getting better and we don't want to <laughs> set back her recovery. As my brother would say, oh, my ears, my ears. You're making my ears bleed. <laughs> it cannot be unheard. 
there's a guy at a software place that I used to have to speak to about their software and I'd say can we get to do this and he'd go my eyes are bleeding <laughs> <laughs> well yeah but can we that's funny <laughs> well actually I hadn't thought about it but yeah we probably could and if we did this and if we did that and then he come back to me and okay so it stopped bleeding now <laughs> and that's he, he'd have figured it out it was just like, no. <laughs> my kids' were, ears were bleeding earlier. I've been practicing um, my DC challenge on the flute, where literally all the fingers that were down for D are now up, and all the fingers that were up for D are now down. And I'm going to nod like I know what you're talking about. Basically, you just Someone go like with. that and then like that and then like that and then like that. And you have to, like, it's really tricky at first. So I've basically just been going do, 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 do for about half an hour today. <laughs> you know, it's the wonder that children never get musical qualifications, isn't it? Yeah. And particularly anybody learning the violin in them first few weeks. Oh, I actually body with a Ricardo. It's a wonder they're not beaten to death with them. I actually had a violin before they put me on um, the clarinet. I think they realised that woodwind was more of my forte than strings. All the hot air. Um, yeah, that would be it. Helen said she managed an hour or two sitting in a chair before she needed to lie down to recover. Well, that sounds like progress. It, it probably does. doesn't feel does. like it, but it does sound like a positive move. Because they're always keen to get you sitting in the chair in hospital, aren't they? Well, yeah, because it's easier to make the bed and do all the stuff around you if you're in the chair. I remember when I had... I mean, um, you're not festering in the bed. When I had my ectopic, and like I've mentioned before, I've got quite a big scar. I had a big opening, right? Literally, it was done at four o'clock in the afternoon. The very next morning, seven o'clock in the morning, the nurses were trying to get me up and out of bed and I was like I can't get out of bed my stomach is hanging out of a hole <laughs> and I refused for the first day but then I had to get up the next day they wouldn't let me stay in bed the next day no it's not good for you they want you moving no. I know but you don't realize how much you use your stomach until somebody's decided to go in there with a scalpel yeah tell me about it it's horrendous isn't it they cut 52 muscles for a cesarean section. And yeah. if you're lucky, they stick them all right back together in the right order. <laughs> well, I, I went in on the Monday, had the emergency operation on the Monday, and I didn't leave until the Friday. This is and probably doing Helen up no end. Sorry, but this is completely different. Helen's, Helen's fine. Helen's not having her stomach whacked open right now. Not right this minute, I hope, anyway. Um, and there was not a woman, on a not on a Sunday afternoon, there was a woman in the bed across from me. She came in on the Tuesday, had a full hysterectomy and was out within 24 hours. Well, that's good. And I'm sitting there going, yeah, well, what about me? <laughs> oh, my God. But no, Helen, I hope you are feeling better soon and that I'm not saying inappropriate things. For somebody who's not feeling too good. Oh, she's having a laugh at you now. So she said, yet. They're not cutting <laughs> her open just yet. Fingers crossed, eh? And when they do, it'll be a, a couple of wee keyhole jobbies. Yeah, let's hope so. Well, that keyhole to... stuff's much easier, isn't it? Well, and it's a faster recovery. And I've got really, really dodgy hard bits on my finger and thumb from pressing down on keys. Bet you wanted to know that, didn't you? You've not been using your Aveeno, have you? I haven't got any Aveeno, I've only got Nivea. Yeah. But these are pressure soils, I don't think that would help anyway. Don't know, sandpaper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so just drive the kids mad, it's fine. And then I got the old shark out and drove the dog mad as well. I've, I've been having a great day of it. I bet I've been driving the neighbour's potty as well. 
Why have you had all the windows open while you were singing? Well, no, to be fair, I have made a conscious effort to shut the back door before I start playing my flute. Because I'm kind like that. Right. But I'm sure they could probably hear it. You know, like if someone's trying to learn the violin, I think they can hear it about six miles away, can't they? Probably. Certainly dogs will. <laughs> oh, poor Arthur. He just looks at me with those sad eyes. Like, please, no. I'm starving. Will you stop? <laughs> My ears. Bless him. Yeah. So what did you get up to last night then? Did you go gallivanting, go out to a restaurant for dinner, go to the cinema? Um, I went to Costa del Kitchen. Excellent. What was the weather like in Costa del Kitchen? It was quite warm. Excellent. It was cool everywhere else, but it was quite warm in there. Mm. Was there anything interesting on the menu in Costa del Kitchen? Um, a bar of chocolate. <sighs> what flavour? Just chocolate. Just chocolate. Just plain chocolate. Dark milk. Milk. Mm, very nice. Just just cheap chocolate, 30p chocolate. Helen says she's going to be experimenting doing cables later using a straw. Good luck. What will you use for your yarn? <laughs> it might be best not to ask. She might be knitting strips of gauze or something. Might have been a bit of Hannibal Lecter going on there just to get something sort of long and thready or mm. flipping people's hair and running off with it. I wonder if she had spaghetti for lunch and she saved some of it. Yeah, make uh, sweater chini. Yeah. I don't know how that would feel on the skin though. Mm. And it, once it's dried. Mm, not much give. Yeah, it'd be quite stiff. You need something with a bit stand more. Stand up on its own, wouldn't it? Yeah. Not enough elasticity. The problem with pasta, it's just got no commitment. I remember, how sad is this? The first time I ever saw dried pasta was at school doing an art class and I tried to eat it. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight. It's okay. I've got another row of knits and then cast off. So how, did you do any more last night or did you go back to your blankie for a little while? Um, I didn't do anything much last night. You were too enamoured with Costa del Kitchen. I was just tired. Do you know what? I was knackered. I went to bed at half past seven last night. Uh, it's her socks, she says. She left her cable needle at home. I would think a straw would do the trick. As long as it's not like a huge one, it should be fine, you know. Squidge the end down. Snip the end off somebody's IV. Oh, and now that would work. Nick the tube, that, that, you know. Not that we're advocating doing that at all. Yeah, but if somebody's asleep, you could just take it off of them. They wouldn't know. Just a little snip past the knotted bit. Be fine. Or the clamped bit, you know. Just make sure the nurse isn't looking. You could ask them for some. They might have a pencil or something. But a straw would be better. You don't want anything that's too thick on a socky, do you? I think I did it with a safety pin when I was in the garage once and I'd forgotten my cable needle. And the woman behind the desk, I asked her if she had a paper clip and she didn't, but she had a safety pin. You just have to be really careful that you don't jab your finger. Yeah, with my track record, it's, uh, it's probably not a good influence for me. No. So, I don't know. Let us know how you get on, Helen. I wonder if Helen's seen anyone using anything such as like your mask mates in hospital, you know, the ones that are on the clean wards, not on the, on the red wards. Oh, I don't know. She's saying she did ask if they had a toothpick because that, of course, would be perfect. It would be perfect. It slipped quite nicely into the yarn. Especially with sock yarn being so fine. Mm. 
Mm. So do you want to see my birthday present then? Oh, you finally got your birthday present? Uh, not off mum and dad, this oh. is my friend Jackie. Uh, All right. Yeah, she come was, on then. Her and Wayne were taking the dogs up to uh, Birkrig for a walk. And it's not far from the village, so she asked if I was going to be home, which I thought was funny. Because <laughs> like, you're not allowed to come in anyway. Where else am I anyway? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's at home. Yeah. <laughs> Unless they're shopping or picking up a prescription or, Going or in hospital, home. they're kind of at home. Maybe she thought you might be out with the dogs. Yeah, possibly. Is it on the rainbow blanket? It is. As if by magic. <gasps> oh, wow. I love Watch that. to the Zoom screen. I know that you will love these colours. Such um, gorgeous colours. I sea really love colours, that. I mm. think. Um, it's colour 340. Um, of the drops fable and is that sock yarn it is and it's got like an aqua a teal a light blue a light bluey green it's gorgeous those kind of colors and then the cream for the contrast oh and wow. the shawl is a drops pattern a free pattern called seascapes and she's doing it in the original colors Right, um, right, which was sort of a denim -y and navy and lighter blue together, yeah, yeah. but it needed to be warmer for me, so that's why I'm doing. Those are gorgeous. So, are you like a little bit excited to cast on again now? Then I am, yeah, and I've made a cardigan in this, um, right, with a greeny mix in Drops Delight, yeah, dark greens, dark navies. Uh, and two raw stripes garter right two raw stripes of this and then the the darker greeny color um, and I absolutely love it I wear it so often I just the colors just dreamy beautiful I'm very jealous that is a lovely birthday present yeah it's a really nice surprise as well because obviously I'm not expecting to see it for like tall yonks yeah oh. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. That is lovely. Who says that? Someone oh, Helen, Helen says she's got enough holes in her already. Oh, Helen, we don't need any more holes. No. Bless. I can't imagine being stuck in hospital like that. It's awful. But at least she's got her socks. Yeah. That would be worse if you had nothing to do and the fascinating distraction of us class well you know the, you can be fascinating and i'll just you know sit here making funny hand gestures <laughs> waving yeah <laughs> two four six eight ten, who do we four, appreciate <laughs> are you not doing a chant i'll get my pom-poms oh. out for you 19, 20. Have I got enough of a tail to do 22? Oh, I bet you have. Looks like a nice long tail. Yeah, it's not bad. I don't like casting them like that. Oh, it's my preferred method, but I like to have uh, two balls of yarn. Right. And then cut tail, one tail when I've finished. <laughs> I prefer like a cable cast on. I like a cable cast on, but this is so super quick and I have no patience. Is that the zigzag cast on? No. Is that different? Well, I don't think it's the zigzag cast on. It's just called long tail. Yeah, but you know, like, like I said, I call, I call one a zigzag because you go in zigzag with your hands. That was a provisional one though, wasn't uh... it? Do you, is it not the same kind of movement? I don't know because I don't do a long tail cast on. I think I did it once about seven years ago and I can't remember. A friend of mine showed me years ago and I looked at her as if to, she was some sort of sorceress. Yeah, because your hands are doing all this and then you've got a load of 
um, stitches. It's like, where have they come from? They're massively quick. Um, <laughs> and I made her slow it right down. Yeah. And then videoed her with my phone. And then watched it, watched it, watched it, did it, did it, did it. And now it's just automatic. I don't even think about it. Yeah, you just get your needle and your thread and you just go, do, 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 do. I've got 600 stitches all of a sudden. Well, if you've got a long cast on to do, it's totally the fastest way. Right. Just never got round, got my head round it. So have you been busy, busy, busy in the house, not being able to do much on your blankie? Is that what you're saying? Um, Jay? Have I been busy, busy, busy? Doing some I've been busy doing nothing. Is what I've been busy with today. Um, Do you know what? It's Sunday. That's what you're supposed to be busy doing. Yeah, I kind of feel like I don't really want to do anything. And Fair enough. I just can't be bothered. And I'm thinking it'll do tomorrow because tomorrow's yeah. the work day. And you're not going out anywhere tomorrow, are you? Are you going, you know, on a cruise? Um, no plans. No plans. You haven't got anyone to meet up for coffee or, you know... No. Tickets no. for the theatre? No. Well, then it will do tomorrow. I thought that just for a change, I might stay at home, um, work at home, and not see anybody. Uh, yeah. Then Jake, when he turns up. Well, you know, my favourite saying at the moment, there's an out spoiling. Mm. I felt a bit well, like I, that this morning. I was asking about an update on the lamb, in, and he thinks they've got about 70 lambs now. Wow. That's a lot, isn't it? How long's that been over that they've been born? It's not very long at all, is it? A few weeks? It was after my birthday, wasn't it? At the beginning of April. Yeah. Mm. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, about three weeks, maybe. Do you know what, right? I just don't understand. Where are the weeks going? Where is the time going? We're all busy doing nothing, yet time is flying. Oh, Helen's singing. She said, busy doing nothing, working the whole day through, trying to find lots of things not to do. What song's that one? Busy doing nothing. I don't know if I know that one. Busy doing nothing, working the whole day through, trying to find lots of things not to do. Is it Bing Crosby and Danny Kay or somebody like that? Oh, I don't know. Come on, Google Foo. Google Foo, busy doing nothing. I'm sure it's been Crosby. It is been Crosby. A Connecticut, Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court. Is that out of a movie? Yeah. Yeah, you can watch it on YouTube. Cool. I like being crossbit. I've got White Christmas and Holiday Inn on DVD. Yeah, we'd like to be unhappy, but we never do have the time. Was Bing Crosby in um, High Society? Yes. I do like that movie. I'm sure that's the one with the song with Oops, there goes another rubber tree plant. Uh, I don't know. I've, I'm sure I've seen Bing Crosby and Danny Kay do Busy Doing Nothing, but I don't know who it was with him in the movie. Right. They might have just done it on like one of the, didn't Bing Crosby have his own chat show or something? Possibly. So maybe he came on there and did it. Oh, so it was in the movie and he's probably performed it with Danny Kay on something. That might be what I remember and seeing. What was the movie? A, a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Cart. I might have to look that one up. I'm just writing it down. See, I have it written down on my on my book. You will be very surprised to know that I'm halfway through watching Jesus Christ Superstar again today. All right. You were really surprised about that, weren't you? Uh, now, 
Oops, there goes another rubber tree plant. Yeah, I love that song. And Sinatra and child actor Eddie Hodges in the 1959 film A Hole in the Head. Oh, so, no, it's I didn't think it was in high society. A Hole in the Head. I'm going to look that one up as well. The head. High society is who wants to be a millionaire, isn't it? Yeah. I do. I prefer the Philadelphia story. I like both, but I prefer the Philadelphia story. I love quite, Catherine Hepburn. I would quite like to be a millionaire so that I could, you know, give it away, do nice things with it. Be nice, wouldn't it? But are you scarfing? Oh yeah, I've swapped. Look, sorry. So I'm gonna gonna go back onto my um, behind the green door, which I'm gonna rename behind the blue door just for this project, or blue and grey, or tones of blue, sapphires. It's beautiful. <laughs> How long is it now? Ugh, it's that long. <sighs> it's quite long. So. I want to go longer though. I want it to wrap. For a double wrap. Yeah, I want it to be one of them really huge, chunky ones. That so when you've got it double wrapped, it's going to be like up there. Yeah. Perfect for the winter. Will be nice. Mm. Perfect colours for you as well. You suit definitely. Your blue and greys, don't you? I do. I do suit the blue and grey. It's strange more. that I'm wearing a blue. And white top this has got little dragonflies on it and i absolutely love it but it's really thin so i've worn it today because it's quite warm i think because it's colder outside i don't know um for me i felt colder yesterday morning than i did this morning okay but it's not really been very sunny at all right so I mean it's really cloudy no sun today. It's really cloudy here today. We did have some sun first thing this morning. I don't know if that made a difference to how I felt, whereas yesterday it was the opposite. So it was all cloudy and horrible, and then the sun came out, and now we've had it the other way. The sun's been out and now it's cloudy and horrible. But it, I sat in the car running it for about 30, 40 minutes talking to Phil, and I'd have the door open because it was warm. Oh well. So, I don't know, maybe it's just the way you feel sometimes. I think I'll have to run the car tomorrow. Yeah. Confuse the neighbours, they'll think I'm going somewhere and want to pinch the parking space. <laughs> <laughs> they'll be disappointed. They certainly will. And do you care? No. <laughs> this the neighbor that's been having visitors that they shouldn't be having no no it's the it's a constant battle on a small street that wasn't designed for vehicles I where you move your car road. and you hope for a bit of space when you get back yeah i used to know one of those but in fact actually <laughs> do you know when we were talking the other day about my patney lane scottish run yeah, and we were talking about the guy who actually said about the Scottish run and that he mm. actually said to Elaine one day and he had a car and a motorbike and he actually said to her one day that he wasn't going to come around and see her because he didn't want to lose his parking space outside the house but he could have just got his motorbike so I think that was that was an indicator it wasn't true love at that point, to be honest. Well, it was true love. He just loved the car. And the parking space. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I used to have to fight for a parking space when I lived down in South Sea. Typical Victorian terraces, both sides. Mm. Cars parked alongside with just one a little gap in the middle to drive down. Sometimes I have to park streets and streets and streets away, but you get used to it, I suppose, don't you? Manage. Yeah. What it is. Yeah. It's 
So what's your plans for this evening? Anything exciting? Uh, not really. Um, I don't know whether to have a whiskey, if I can ever find it. I think you've lost that now for good, to be honest. Um, yeah, possibly. My dad said that he'd had an email off Amazon and the fire stick that he's ordered that they told him wouldn't be here till mid-May, it's coming in the morning. Excellent. So he's really pleased because the internet on their telly's died. See, which is no help at all, is it? So no. can't get onto the Netflix and mum wants to have a go at Disney Plus. Right. They like their Star Wars movies and they love Disney. I can't find bed knobs and broomsticks on there. Oh. I'll have to do a search. I've got that on DVD. I do love that one. I've got it on video, but not on DVD. Have you still got a video player? Uh, upstairs under the bed. It's quite an oh, expensive one. I don't know whether it will connect to this telly, to be honest. But might be something to investigate. I don't have it. A... I've got the original Pete's Dragon on video. and I've got, oh. I've got Ivor the Engine and Bagpuss. I love Bagpuss. We will fix it. We will mend it. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, my very favourite, Portland Bill. Oh, I used to love Portland Bill. I went and visited that um, that lighthouse once when I was younger. We went on a family holiday down there and we went to Portland Bill. That always used to make me laugh that the names of everybody, you know, Finister and Alistair and, and the little girl in the shop was called Gail. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See, that was another one. I'm very clever. That's another one that goes over the head of kids. Yeah, it's wasted on children. It, it really is. is. It's for the parents. One. Well another done. One. What's that? Three? That's four out of four. This hole, so I can't. I love it. Yeah, I used to love bag purse. I I've got loads of stuff on DVD. One of the things I've got on DVD that's one of my absolute favourites from when I was younger is Wurzel Gummidge. We used to oh, wait. John Pertwee. Yeah, I've got some DVDs of him, and me and Caitlin used to watch them when she was little. She loved them, and because I remember on a Saturday, the whole family when I was growing up, we all used to sit there and guess which way he was going to fall. Mm. And it, it, whoever was right didn't have to do the washing up that day. Oh, I used to love Wurzel Gummidge. I missed the new, they did a new version, didn't they, over Christmas? Yeah, my dad said it was brilliant. Was it really good? I, I it. haven't watched it, but he said it was fantastic. They right. really enjoyed it. I wonder if it's on Britbox, because it was a BBC one, wasn't it? Yeah. I might have to investigate. I did like Wurzel Gummidge. Aunt I, Sally. Ne I never liked Aunt Sally. Well, we always still, me and Phil will say, cup of tea, Aunt Sally. <laughs> cup of tea and a slice of cake. <laughs> she was just mean and horrible to him and she didn't deserve him. Well, she didn't. But then, you know, how often is that true in real life? Yeah. You see it a lot, don't you, really? I love you, hey? Hempecked husbands. Mm. Yeah, that was a lot of years ago, wasn't it? was i was actually saying to phil in the car today i said there's two things that are going to come out of this lockdown there's going to be a baby boom loads and loads and loads of new babies and there's going to be loads of divorce <laughs> yeah some people realize yeah, that... let's just clarify that the babies are going to be to people who don't have children already yeah because anyone who's locked up with kids at the moment is going to be going no well, they're the best kind of contraception, let's be honest, aren't they? Um, but yeah, you, there's going to be a lot of people who realise that they like each other a lot more than they thought they did at one point. And there's going to be a lot of people who realise that they don't like each other as much as they did think that they did. Yeah, they've got nothing in common. Yeah. And now that they're cooped up together for 23 hours a day <laughs> or 22 oh. if you exercise separately. Just catching up with comments. Helen says she loves Philadelphia Story, one of her top ten. I think it's just a beautiful, beautiful film. And I, I mean, anything with Jimmy Stewart is 
is good in my book, but I love Catherine Hepburn. In my Amazon book. Prime has got quite a few old movies on at the moment. Is it? Um, because I went through the other day and started putting them in my um my watch list. That's when I put Barnum in. Oh, okay. So I don't know if any of those are on there. I mean, I like Philadelphia. Not I've not seen Philadelphia Story, but I've seen Philadelphia, which is a whole different story, I think. Very different, yeah. Saw that at the cinema, cried my eyes out. Now, Helen, in your list, what about African Queen? Remind me who's in that. Catherine Hepburn and Humpy, Humpy Bogart. Oh, Michelle says she loved Ivor the Engine back in the day. I loved it. It was like Jones the Steve. Oh, it's one of those, isn't it? it was, you know, everybody's name was based on their profession or their occupation. I don't think I ever really saw Ivor the Engine. And the little dragon, Idris. Mm. I wonder if that's who Idris Elba's named after. I don't know. Because I've always thought it's an unusual name, Idris. You don't see many people called that, do you? No. Hmm. I can't think what other movies were on, because um, I was looking for some of the old musicals, like Seven Brides for Seven Brothers and Oklahoma. Oh, Oklahoma. Um, I like it, but I... I saw a recording of a stage version with Howard Keel and that was it for me. Nobody else compares. Really? Um, I like Seven Brides with Seven Brothers, but one of my favourites is with Doris Day and Howard Keel. Mm, which one's that? It's the Calamity Jane. I love Calamity Jane. My secret. There's no secret. business like show business. That's the one, isn't that? Isn't that in Calamity Jane? I can't remember. I'll have to see. Google all of Google those that. ones were not on that. Well, they were on there, but you had to pay for them. They weren't included in Prime. Wasn't it um, Herman that used to do There's No Business Like Show Business in the one with Marilyn Monroe? I don't know. I, I had it. Or was it in Annie Get Your Gun? What's in Annie Get Your Gun? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I'm getting them all confused. I was actually looking for Fiddler on the Roof. I wanted oh, to watch Fiddler on the Roof. One. Sunrise, but sunset. And... Again, it's on there, but you have to pay for it. Mm. Um, oh, Carousel. Helen says Carousel. Oh, I don't know. Um... Is that the one with um, the smell of the grease paint, the roar of the crowd? Songs from Carousel. Let's see some Google thing. Carousel walls, Mrs. Snow, so look at yeah, yeah. You'll never walk alone. <laughs> no. You'll never walk alone was in Carousel. Yeah, did you not know that? No, I never did. It's very apt at the moment. Well, it's because he's he's a ghost. Oh, don't tell me. I'm going to have to watch it. And in fact, I think if you buy the movie on there, it's about the same price as actually just hiring it. And then you can watch it forever. So I think I might just, you know. There's no business like show business. There's no business like show business. Right, so it, that's the name of the film with Ethel Merman. So Dan Shirley. She? Um, she was more of a matronly singer. Right, I don't think I know her. More of a masculine voice than a, a light, fluffy lady voice. Okay. Um, Dan Daly, Donald O'Connor, who was in Singing in the Rain. The I'm one that singing. runs against the wall and flips back. It's amazing how they do that. Marilyn Monroe's in No Business Like Show Business. 
I love in the full Monty where that Hugo, what's his name, is auditioning and he says he oh. can do the Donald O'Connor thing and then just smacks into the wall and Absolutely. drops the second Hilarious. So and donkey. <laughs> when they say they they call me donkey, why do they call you donkey? <laughs> the lunchbox has landed. Yeah. I absolutely love The Full Monty. It's just such a good, feel-good movie, isn't it? It is. I think even if you're really down in the dumps, you, you can crack a little smile with that. Yeah, I'm definitely in a, in a musicals mood at the moment. But for the older ones, the ones I haven't seen in goodness knows how long, like my mum might have watched them. Mac and Mabel. My mum used to listen to that all the time. I love that. Well, I've got a pattern named after that. Have you? And roses suit you so. Ah, it's been so long. I'm gonna have to watch Mac and Mabel. Yeah, it's just such a pretty song. There's a really sad one. I won't bring you roses. That's the one. Oh, and roses suit you so. Yeah. Oh, honestly, I haven't heard that, I'd say, for about 30 years, that soundtrack. It got it was really popular when Tarville and Dean did a, a nice dance to it, wasn't it? Was it? That sounds about right, because my mum used to have it on the record player constantly. And um, after we sent my nan to see Phantom of the Opera, that one played constantly in our house as well because my nan wanted that. My nan used to live with us. Right. Um, so we had Phantom of the Opera on. She used to play um, all the old, like the soundtracks to musicals. I remember she used to play Oliver all the time. Oh, my mum's got a video somewhere of Jake singing um, Where Is Love? Oh. Honestly, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. It's a really difficult song to sing, actually. He had a beautiful voice as a child. And then something dropped. Well, he's still got a good voice now. He's a good singer now. He just well, doesn't sing. Well, well he, sings in, he sings in the car because he knows it's compulsory. Yeah. And if Rosie's in the car, everybody has to sing. Right, I like it. You should get him on the stage. He's done a lot of public performing, done a lot of singing. See? He sang he... Um, one of my favourite ones for me, um, Wherever You Will Go, by The Calling. Oh, I love that song. Oh, he's a good little singer then. Yeah, I might watch Love Actually. Oh, I do love that movie. Feel good, isn't it? And the music's really nice. And oh, I've got just... the soundtrack somewhere to Bridget Jones' Diary, and that's got some really lovely songs. The only one I really uh, fast forward is Robbie Williams' Mrs. Jones, because I just think his voice is... He, he doesn't look really after his voice. You. He's really lazy about his vocal work. Mm. I love, I, and I could literally just go onto YouTube and look for the clip from Love Actually, where um, Hugh Grant does the dance. Oh, the PM. Yeah. yeah. When he goes across from one room to the other, and he's like, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good. That is guaranteed to make you happy, isn't it? Yeah, it's just so lovely. But the full Monty as well. Yeah, Full Monty's very funny and Brassed Off was quite good. Yeah, I haven't seen that in a long time. Um, what else? I mean, if I've got, if it's on, yeah. I'll record it and I'll watch it. And the original Footloose, the Kevin Bacon. <gasps> Love Footloose. Awesome soundtrack. Absolutely superb. And I love the Top Gun soundtrack. But the Top Gun soundtrack. Because it makes you drive. It makes really you drive really fast, especially um, Danger Zone. The Danger Zone, yeah. Yeah. It's Kenny Loggins. That's what it is. The, the, the problem is Kenny. Well, we'll have a word with him. Because he was the Footloose guy as well, wasn't he, Kenny? Yeah. Ken. 
you need to have a word with him, say, I've got a speeding ticket because of you, Ken. Are you going to cough up? He'd probably just refer you to Tom Cruise. I wonder if he's going to do the soundtrack for the new one. I keep trying to get Caitlin to watch Top Gun with me, but she said it's not a genre that she's interested in. I mean, come on. Not a genre that she's interested in. Those were her actual words. My God, she's thought that through, hasn't she? <laughs> See, Jack would just, just go, nah. Don't fancy it. No explanation, just nah. 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 But she said it's not a genre that she's interested in. Honestly, mental, absolutely mental, my kids. One that I really enjoy, not a musical, but just an older film that's just incredibly thought provoking is 12 Angry Men. Do you know, I've never actually seen the full movie. I've seen clips of it. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. It's it amazing. Like and uh, the other one that's really good is To Kill a Mockingbird. Very yeah, good. I've seen To Kill a Mockingbird. I was very disappointed in the sequel that came out a couple of years back. You know, all the hype over it and that. Oh, well. I thought it was very badly written, to be honest. It, it looked to me as if um, she'd kind of sketched out a rough draft of what she wanted to do and never picked it up. And then the publishing house just said, let's cash in on this and just publish it as it is. Off in the way, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, there was, there was no finesse to it, not like the original. Yeah. But ho oh, hum. The movie was good. Who who was Atticus Finch in that? He was someone. Gregory famous. Peck. That was it, yeah. I knew he was someone famous. You can't beat David Niven. I'm sorry that you can't. I like a bit of David Niven. Oh, Helen says she did her sister in law a favour to tell her that Paddington was on film for a couple of Saturdays back, as we'd all heard that she, that when she was visiting, um, she wouldn't watch Paddington 2 until she'd seen Paddington 1, of course. Oh, Roman Holiday was on last week. That's a lovely one. That I is a good one. one. That's that really good sweet. One. I must admit, I've never, ever had any inclination whatsoever to watch the Paddington movies. Um, I've watched one. The first one? Some of it. And you didn't watch it all? Didn't like it. No, I just didn't. I haven't fancied it. I'm sorry, but I'm just of that generation where Michael Horden reading it and the very basic animations was all I wanted. Paddington was brilliant. And Rupert. Rupert the Bear? Yeah, I used to love Rupert Bear. And no, not that big a fan. Andy Pandy, I used to like as well. Ah, well, there by lies the tale. What's that? Oh, because my nickname at home is Lou Below. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah. Why? Because you get into bed with um, Andy Pandy? Well, Teddy, actually. Oh. If you read the books oh is it teddy yeah i remember my mum saying something about barbara whitehouse is gonna ban that next or something yeah um no i, I always got called luby lou at home and my dad still calls me lube lube luby i'd be careful with that one <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> that's funny don't you just love dads? Sometimes. Hmm. I never had a nickname in my family, I don't think. Not that they said to my face, anyway. I like the um, movies of sort of the... Um, Alistair, is it Alistair McLean? Or is it Alexander McLean? Um, Alistair McLean? I'm not sure. The um, Where Eagles Dare, The Eagle Has Landed, those... So uh, they war movies. Yeah. I like war movies like A Bridge Too Far and stuff like that. Yeah. 
Well, that's the same author. Oh, is it? Cool. Yeah. I liked that one, Bridge Too Far. Well, I read and all the books as a child. Absolutely loved them. But what was the other one? The, the River Kwai or something? That's a different... I think, is that a different... I wouldn't author, have a but Yeah, um, another famous war movie in towering performance. Yeah. Is it Alec Guinness who plays the... Um, Absolutely officer. loved Alec Guinness. Loved him in Scrooge. My favourite version of Scrooge was Alec Guinness and... Oh, Helen's nickname is coming true because she was called Jelly Belly. Yeah. <laughs> I think we've all got a bit of that, especially at the moment, haven't we? Yeah, well, I'm definitely not throwing stones in that direction, Helen, so you're safe from me. My, I've told you before what my nickname is from my husband, haven't I? Yeah, Lumpy. Bumpy body. Bumpy BB. body. Yeah, he calls me BB for bumpy body. <laughs> Not baby for Brigitte Bardot then. No, bumpy body, unfortunately. Yeah, Helen's saying true story though. Yes, Bridge on the River Kwai is. It's, um... I think they all were, weren't they? Um, Bridge Too got... Far was a true story as well, I think. Where he goes there, I'm not sure. With those, I think they're just fiction, aren't they? I don't know. Eagle Escape to Victory. Well, I loved Escape that to was, Victory. Yeah. It's all right. Do, 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 do. I've got that on DVD. Pele in that one. Victoire. Victoire. That's the one. And I love Casablanca. Oh, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. That is a well, good that's one. not Casablanca, is it? That's, oh, what's um... that one then? <sighs> oh, yeah, Casablanca's the one with the played again, Sam, isn't it? Yeah. That one is Scarlet Hara. Um... Gone with the Wind. That's the one, yeah. She was actually not a very nice character, was she? No, she was a spoiled little cow. Yeah. She wasn't nice at all. She no. actually got what she deserved in the end, unfortunately. Well, fortunately, whatever, whichever way you want to look at it. Mm. Well, Rep. Rep Butler? Is that Rhett. your name? Rhett. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my grand series, they had the hots for him. Clark Gable. Mm -hmm. Didn't really float my boat, but there you are. No, he was a bit too um, strong looking in the face, shall we say. Yeah. Oh, my gran had a thing for Victor Mature as well. I don't know that one. My mum's two big crushes that I remember growing up um, were, oh, she liked David Niven. She really did like David Niven. But her two main ones were Omar Sharif and David Essex. Mm. I don't mind David Essex, but I never liked Omar Sharif. David Essex is totally different now. He looks completely different. Why well, an old man now? Yeah, but do you know how sometimes men they they do grow old gradually, and but you can see that it's still the same person. Yeah. He just I don't know. He looks completely different. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Helen saying Emery's so funny. What have I done now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and she says her mum like Christopher Plummer. Oh, do you know? Even yeah, I had a little bit a of a him. I had a little bit of a crush on him when um I went through a um sound of music phase. I used to watch that quite a bit. Oh, you Brinner for me. <gasps> oh no, he was nice in the King and I. Well, and I loved him. I, I loved the Magnificent Seven. Do you know? I don't think I've ever seen that. <gasps> totally missing out. But to really get the genre, I think you have to watch Akira Kurosawa's The Seven Samurai, which is what the story is based on. Right. I haven't seen that. I've seen Tora Tora Tora. That was about the Japanese um, fighter pilots, wasn't it? Mm. 
Torah, Torah, Torah. My mum used to watch Tenko. It used to scare the Bee Gees us out in Ayataya. I remember Tenko. Oh. There's a, a holiday place down near the M6 at Junction 35 at Carnforth. Right. And they had these wooden cabins and they were painted grey because that was sort of the the chic colour of the 80s, wasn't it? Greys yeah. and blues and whatnot. And the locals still call it Tenko. <gasps> I wouldn't want to go and Now there. they're all painted woodland colours and all the trees have grown around, so you can't see them. So it look a bit nicer. Did yeah, you ever awesome. see, um, a bit like it, did you see The Railway Man with Colin Firth in it? No. Because that's based on a true story. It's about a guy who um, was a prisoner of war in Japan and they had to build some kind of railway or something, these prisoners. And it was it was awful, absolutely awful. And it's the true story of this guy. And he went back and confronted his captors and that. Who else was in it? The female, Nicole Kidman. No, okay, I've mm -hmm. not seen it. It's a really good movie. If you if you come across it, I'd recommend it. I I'm like not, Colin. Perth. My kind of go to if I'm tired and I don't know what to watch is, is these days. It seems to be The King's Speech. Yeah, it's a good one, Matt. I like Helen oh. Bonham Carter. I think she's brilliant. Helen's saying A Matter of Life and Death is in her top ten. David Niven, yeah. Mm. Wasn't that is he a very in... clever film. Wasn't he in one where he was, like, stranded in a boat? I could have just made that up. You know I make things up all the time, don't you? What kind of boat? Just sort of like, you know, as if you've been on a big ship and it sinks and you have to go on like a little lifeboat or something. Got a vague recollection of like a war movie where the ship's been sunk. Oh, is that the Cruel Sea or something like that with Possibly. Um, Stanley Matthews? It's see, I don't know. I just have these little snippets that I remember, but I don't really know what I'm remembering. Like I was talking to my dad about one movie the other day and I was saying, you know, the, it's a plane crash in World War II, like a bomber or something. And there's about five or six people on it and they're all they're all um, dead or something. And they, they all go to the afterlife or something apart from one of them. And my dad said it's called Soul Survivor. Okay, um, right. Helen says they're packing her up to move. So is this Ooh. back to the other ward? Well, good luck on the other ward. Let us know how you get on. Yeah, hopefully it's a good move. Yeah. Come for your chair, maybe. A nice view out of the window. That'd be good. Not too hot. Yeah. Not, not too cold. Goldilocks temperature. Yeah. Those hospitals are horrendous. You're either freezing cold and like the blankets aren't enough to keep you warm or it's boiling in there because you can't open the windows. Yeah, I stayed with Jake um, quite a few years ago now when he had to have an overnighter in mm. children's ward. We were trying to keep his temperature down and he had an IV into up his fluids because he was dehydrated and needed medication. So we were sorting that out, but they had this fan on him to cool him down because he was burning up. Yeah, bloody frozen. Oh. I went and got my coat out of the car. I said, right, I'm going to nip to Tesco's and come back. Because Tesco's was 24 hours. I went and bought myself a duvet. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I was absolutely perished. Oh. And there's nothing worse, because once you get cold, you just can't get warm again, can you? That's the thing. I mean, they were really good in children's world, though fantastic with us you know no complaints yeah. yeah I suppose it's difficult to provide heating in such a large, bu large building and get it right everywhere and also not have it too warm for people like Jake when he's not well and wants cooling down I suppose and warm enough for people like my dad who's on warfarin and absolutely yeah. all the time yeah Must be Gosh, really my mum's always burning off the chair and dad's always freezing 
the other way. windows, he closes them. <laughs> the other way in our house, I'm the one that's closing windows and whacking the heating up and Phil's always turning it off and opening the windows back up again. I'm actually, you know, quite glad that he wasn't here at the beginning of this lockdown because we'd have all frozen. He'd have had the heating off. Well, up until the point you buried him in the garden and has packed well, the lawnmower on top of him. There is a little hatch in my decking, like a little thingy that you can lift up. I'm sure it's big enough to squidge your body down through. Now, who was it? They were redoing the decking outside the house. And for a joke, they buried a plastic skeleton on, in the ground underneath the decking. So in 20 years or something, when they've moved on to another house and someone else replaces the decking, they're going to find what looks like a body underneath it. <laughs> you really have to worry about people's sense of humour, don't you? <laughs> really, really plays to my sense of humour. That is so funny. <laughs> well, can you imagine the faces? <laughs> you just I mean I know what I, I'd freak I would scream I'd be running down the garden and what would be even worse is if you don't have time to remodel for a while so you've lived in the house for say five years or something and then you remodel and you and you see it and you're like my god that has been there all the time and I've been sitting eating my barbecues on top of that you'd be digging up the rest of the garden wouldn't you <laughs> yeah, I'm not sleeping till you've emptied the rest of that soil. Just yeah. prove to me that this isn't a serial killer graveyard. Exactly. Or, or I'd be in the soil going like this with the skull and going, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> Well, once you realised it wasn't real. <laughs> oh, dear. Aren't people dreadful creatures? Aren't they just, <laughs> you know, prawns and curtain rails and everything? bit mean uh, oh. so Arthur's um actually distracted this afternoon because Caitlin's in the front room so he'll be enjoying himself looking out of the window shouting mm -hmm. at people as they go past right and just before I came to talk to you I gave him the leftover potatoes from lunch ah. so you know he could probably last without food for an extra two minutes now. Well, that's good then. Just two whole minutes, though. You know, he doesn't want to make me think that he's too happy with that amount of food. Yeah, you, know, you might get ideas above your stage. Exactly. You know, we can't be having any of that. Completely unacceptable. Oh, I'll tell you what was a good film, if you can find it. Heaven Can Wait. All right. Now, I think there's a couple of versions, but there was a remake, probably 70s or 80s, with Warren Beatty. And that's really quite sweet. Right. Heaven Can Wait. Yeah. So I've got a big long list here. <laughs> Thing is, I won't be able to find half of them. So even if I can only find one. Yeah. Um. I tell you one really good film, and it was on Amazon the last time I looked. I don't know if you've ever seen it called About Time. And it, oh, uh, is this is it Bill Nye? And that's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've Did got you it enjoy on my it? watch list. Oh, you've not seen it? No, I've watched the oh, trip. Honestly, that would be a good one to watch tonight. Actually, if you want something, it's no. quite good. But maybe you just want comfort watching something that you've seen already. I don't know. I'll have a look. Last night I just watched some um, Have I Got News For You because I just wanted something funny, but I didn't want to concentrate because I was just absolutely shattered. I gave up at half seven and decided I'm going to have to go to bed. Do you know when you're sitting there and you're nodding and you're fighting mm. it? Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, it is, I would highly recommend that. I, um, I've watched it a couple of times and when my sister come up to visit last summer, I put it on when she was here and she said it's one of the best movies she's seen in a very long time. No, oh, well, that's a good recommendation. Yeah. Really enjoyed I'll it. I'll that one then. I like your rainbow behind you. 
looks good, doesn't it? Oh, I downloaded a couple of um, thingies today. I printed one of them off from the post post office website, Royal Mail website. And yeah. it says um, thumbs up for your postie. And it's got like a rainbow on it saying thumbs up for your postie. And it's got a little bit of room above the rainbow. So I'm going to write on there for my postie that I've disinfected my flaps. Flaps and knockers. Yeah. Well, I don't think I've really got a knocker. I've only got a bell. So I think I might put that on there for him. Ring my bell, cleaned my flaps for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can ring my bell, ring my bell. Bless. <laughs> do I cheer you up? Yeah. Or do you see. just like shake your head in exasperation at me? Oh, I see. <laughs> it's both really, isn't it? <laughs> I, see. I don't know. I think back to that. Thursday night that we did where you had a touch much wine and you were trying to do the sign <laughs> for clap for carers <laughs> we're laughing so hard and just off camera you're off camera all you can hear is I'm gonna have to have an emergency wee now because <laughs> you've laughed that hard. I literally nearly did have an accident I think <laughs> <laughs> That was, uh, that, so was that was also because I'd said I'm gonna give I'm gonna go and give the carers a clap. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think I said last week I because because I have the clap on a Thursday. You do have the clap, but only on a Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. Because the rest of the time the you're, all, you're all disinfected. Have you have you actually got your um injections of I've got me so Flara. You've got it, it's all today. sorted. Yeah, Excellent. and I'll smell lovely afterwards. I've got um, apple and cinnamon so flower. Right. Beautiful. Yes, one of my friends did comment about stop telling people not to inject disinfectant. Think of it as reducing the surplus population and let them get on with it. Leave the smarter ones. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Dickens line, that is. Reduce the so, yeah, population. Yeah, exactly. And... <laughs> Darwin would approve. Darwin probably would, yeah. Natural selection and all that malarkey. Uh -huh. If you're stupid enough to do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven knitted ones in. What about buttons? About an hour. Are you running really precariously low on buttons? Um, I'm getting to the stage where I will run out of buttons. So I'll have to crochet some flowers or something and stitch those on. Mm. I can't think of any other way to deal with it. No. But I've got quite a bit. It's just one ball of yarn and I've got quite a lot of it left. It's boys is an opening anytime soon then. I don't think so. I mean, I've got, got 16 out of yesterday's ball of the crochet That's ones. Really so I'm interested to see how many I'll get with the knitted ones. Do you think they're more or less thirsty on the wool? Not sure yet. You're not sure? Not sure yet. Um, they're slightly slower, but I think they're, they're more solid in construction right. and they've got a nice stretch. So they should be fine. We yeah, I'm looking forward to go in the wash, all of these ones. and. Yeah, see how you get on. Be yeah, I might, I might have to crochet flowers this evening. <laughs> oh, there are worse things you could be doing on a Sunday evening. It's all good. Yeah. yeah. Triple. Yeah. Well, thanks, I mean, thanks for watching, everybody. I um, hope we've tickled your fancy with some of our musicals. And <laughs> did ring your bell. Yeah. yeah. Emma's washed her flaps. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm oh. gonna wash. I'm gonna wash them daily. I think it's only fair. It's a public service to wash your flaps daily. It is. And um, if you've got knockers or a bell, then obviously call the bell. And, and if you've got a front gate, I always clean the handle on the front gate. That's an idea. Yeah. Or just leave it on. I touching that. 
my my front gate doesn't have like a like a handly thing it's got a hook into a you know like a like a hole sorry I won't do that that's not good um, <laughs> <laughs> um so if I just leave it unhooked then it will <laughs> It's quickly turning into a carry-on film this week, isn't it? I think it? it's a good time to let's go and get ourselves some tea. What do you? <laughs> I think so. So we'll see you tomorrow, team. I'll go. Thank I'll you go. Very much. And... I'll go. Two